we live in the aftermath of genocide continually. We don't live after the events end in the sense that we think of, of time ending and living after. We live in the debris of spirit, in the aftermath that it, uh, of a world in which the human soul is damaged. When crimes against humanity are permitted, when crimes against civilians during war are permitted, we inflict irreparable damage on our souls. And that is inflicted on all human souls worldwide. Take away, take away mass killing, take away that radical othering of humanity, and I think you, be you begin slowly to become conscious of how important we are to each other. A society is, is only as safe as, as the most vulnerable of its people are safe. A society is only as rich and secure as the most vulnerable and fragile of its members are rich and secure. Just, it just seems to me that, that unless we view it that way, we're lost, we're condemned to a traumatized soul. I don't think we can say that we have um, that we have achieved anything until we have achieved a kind of universal respect for each other. The rest of the achievements are nothing without that. If I could envision a world without genocide, I would envision a healing human soul, and I would envision a new soul for humanity. Uh, some way in which we would become other than we have been and that we would that we would somehow recognize who we really are and how connected we are and and how important it is that we care for each other that we don't inflict harm on our own species or on other species I'm hoping that, that we'll, some of us, the youngest of us, might live to see that. When I was young, I thought I might live to see that because I was, I was idealistic and I hadn't seen too much of the world yet. I hadn't seen what I've now seen, but I'm hoping my son, perhaps, or my young students will live to see this realization.